Welcome to this presentation brought to you by Windermere Senior Living in Wheaton, Illinois. I am Beth Gregg, the Director of Residential Health Services, and I am happy to share with you a presentation titled Beyond Counting Sheep, Tips for Better Sleep. Sleep plays a vital role in good health and well-being throughout your life. Getting enough quality sleep at the right times can help protect your mental health, physical health, quality of life, and safety. The way you feel while you're awake depends in part on what happens when you're sleeping. During sleep, your body is working to support healthy brain function and to maintain your physical health. Ongoing sleep deficiency can raise your risk for some chronic health problems. It also can affect how well you think, react, work, learn, and get along with others. Many factors play a role in preparing your body to fall asleep and to wake up. You have an internal body clock that controls when you're awake and when your body is ready to sleep. The body clock typically has a 24 hour repeating rhythm called the circadian rhythm. Two processes interact to control this rhythm. The first is a pressure to sleep that builds with every hour that you're awake. This drive for sleep reaches a peak in the evening when most people fall asleep. Older people tend to become sleepier in the early evening and wake earlier in the morning compared to younger adults. This pattern is called advanced sleep phase syndrome. The sleep rhythm is shifted forward so that seven or eight hours of sleep are still obtained, but the individuals will wake up extremely early because they've gone to sleep quite early. The reason for these changes in sleep and circadian rhythms as we age is not clearly understood. Many researchers believe it may have to do with light exposure. A second process involves your internal body clock. This clock is in sync with certain cues in the environment. Light, darkness, and other cues help determine when you feel awake and when you feel drowsy. Your body releases chemicals in a daily rhythm, which your body clock controls. When it gets dark, your body releases a hormone called melatonin. Melatonin signals your body that it's time to prepare for sleep, and it helps you feel drowsy. As the sun rises, your body releases cortisol. This hormone naturally prepares your body to wake up. Along with the physical changes that occur as we get older, changes to our sleep patterns are part of the normal aging process. As people age, they tend to have a harder time falling asleep and more trouble staying awake than when they were younger. What's keeping seniors awake? Changes in the patterns of our sleep, what specialists call sleep architecture, occur as we age and this may contribute to sleep problems. To gain rewards of sleep, you need to do more than just log hours. You need to determine whether the sleep you're getting is of a high enough quality and for that, you'll want to keep track of these three critical factors. One, sleeping versus time in bed. High quality sleep is defined in part by being asleep for at least 85% of the time you are in bed. Number two, falling asleep quickly. Experts say that the ability to fall asleep in 30 minutes or less is a good indication that your sleep quality is high. And number three, waking up only once during the night. Sleep occurs in multiple stages, including dreamless periods of light and deep sleep, and occasional periods of active dreaming, otherwise known as REM sleep. The sleep cycle is repeated several times during the night, and although total sleep time tends to remain constant, older people spend more time in the lighter stages of sleep than in deep sleep. Many older adults, though certainly not all, also report being less satisfied with sleep and more tired during the day. Studies on the sleep habits of older Americans show an increase in the time it takes to fall asleep, an overall decline in REM sleep, and an increase in sleep fragmentation, which means waking up during the night with age. The prevalence of insomnia is also higher among older adults. In a recent poll, 44% of older adults experience symptoms of insomnia, at least a few nights per week or more. Insomnia may be chronic or acute 
and is oftentimes related to an underlying cause, such as a medical or psychiatric condition. Sleep deficiency can cause you to feel very tired during the day. You may not feel refreshed and alert when you wake up. Sleep deficiency can also interfere with work, driving, and social functioning. How sleepy you feel during the day can help you figure out whether you're having symptoms of problem sleepiness. You might be sleep deficient if you feel that you could doze off while sitting and reading or watching TV, sitting still in a public place such as a movie theater, meeting or classroom, riding in a car for an hour without stopping, sitting and talking to someone, sitting quietly after lunch, sitting in traffic for a few minutes or other activities like that. Sleep deficiency can cause problems with learning, focusing and reacting. You may have trouble making decisions, solving problems, remembering things, controlling your emotions and behavior, and coping with change. You may take longer to finish tasks, have a slower reaction time, and make more mistakes. You may not notice how sleep deficiency affects your daily routine. A common myth is that people can learn to get by on a little sleep with no negative effects. However, research shows that getting enough quality sleep at the right times is vital for mental health, physical health, quality of life, and safety. An occasional night without sleep makes you feel tired and irritable the next day, but it won't harm your health. After several sleepless nights, the mental health effects become more serious. Your brain will fog, making it difficult to concentrate and make decisions. You'll start to feel down and may fall asleep during the day. Your risk of injury and accidents at work, home, and on the road increases. If it continues, lack of sleep can affect your overall health and make you prone to serious medical conditions such as obesity, heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Can't sleep? The next slides will talk to you about the importance of having a conversation about your sleep with your physician. It's worthwhile to speak to your doctor about insomnia symptoms and about any effects these symptoms may have. Your doctor can help assess how serious a problem it is and what to do about it. Both behavioral therapies and prescription medications are considered effective means to treat insomnia. The proper choice should be matched to a variety of factors in discussion with your doctor. Doctors may not detect sleep problems during routine office visits because patients are awake. So you should let your doctor know if you think you might have a sleep problem. Doctors can diagnose some sleep disorders by asking questions about sleep schedules and habits and by getting information from sleep partners. To diagnose other sleep disorders, doctors also use the results from sleep studies and other medical tests. Sleep studies allow your doctor to measure how much and how well you sleep. They also help to show whether you have sleep problems and how severe they are. Your doctor will do a physical exam to rule out any other medical problems that might interfere with sleep. You may need blood tests to check for thyroid problems or other conditions that can cause sleep problems. Before you see your doctor, think about how to describe your problems, including the following. How often you have trouble sleeping and how long you've had the problem. When you go to bed and get up on work days and days off. How long it takes you to fall asleep. How often you wake up at night and how long it takes you to fall back asleep. Whether you snore loudly and often or wake up gasping or feeling out of breath. How refreshed you feel when you wake up and how tired you feel during the day. How often you doze off or have trouble staying awake during routine tasks like driving. Your doctor may also ask questions about your personal routine and habits. For example, he might ask you about your work or exercise routines. Your doctor also may ask whether you use caffeine, tobacco, alcohol, or any medications, including over-the-counter ones. Talk to your doctor about your symptoms. It's helpful to keep a record of your sleep and fatigue levels through the day and any other symptoms you might have to bring with you when you see your doctor. They may order a series of tests to determine whether or not you have a sleep disorder. Sometimes this may include an overnight stay at a sleep center. To help your doctor, consider keeping a sleep diary for a couple of weeks. Write down when you go to sleep, wake up, and take naps. Also write down how much sleep 
you get each night, how alert and rested you feel in the morning, and as well as how sleepy you feel at various times during the day. Share the information in your sleep diary with your doctor. What is the cause of sleep problems? We'll spend the next few slides talking about common sleep disorders. As we age, there is an increased incidence of medical problems, which are often chronic. In general, people with poor health or chronic medical conditions have more sleep problems. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, otherwise known as GERD, is a common cause of sleep problems because the pain makes it difficult to sleep. Medical conditions such as diabetes, renal failure, respiratory diseases, and immune disorders are all associated with sleep problems. Diseases such as Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis also commonly cause problems sleeping. Sleep deficiency affects people of all ages, races, and ethnicities. Certain groups of people may be more likely to be sleep deficient, such as people who make lifestyle choices that prevent them from getting enough sleep, such as taking medicine to stay awake, abusing alcohol or drugs, or not leaving enough time to sleep. People might have undiagnosed or untreated medical problems, such as stress, anxiety, or sleep disorders. They might have medical conditions or take medicines that interfere with sleep. They might have certain medical conditions that have been linked to sleep disorders, such as heart failure, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, depression, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. If you have or have had one of these conditions, Ask your doctor whether you might benefit from a sleep study. Many drugs are used to treat health conditions, but they might also have side effects that alter your ability to sleep. Talk to your doctor about any medications you take that might be causing a negative impact on your sleep. Antiarrhythmic medications can trigger middle of the day fatigue as well as sleep difficulties at night. Antihistamines may help you fall asleep faster, but they may negatively affect your sleep quality. Beta blockers are used to control high blood pressure, but they can lead to insomnia. Steroids can give you some daytime jitters, along with an increased risk of nighttime insomnia. Diuretics or water pills can be used to treat high blood pressure, but they may keep you awake due to side effects that, increase, that include frequent urination and nighttime calf cramps. If you suspect that a medication you're taking is interfering with your sleep, talk to your doctor. It's possible that your doctor can prescribe a different medication that provides similar benefits with fewer sleep-related side effects. The impacts of pain-related sleep loss on millions of Americans is significant. Pain is a serious intrusion to sleep. It is frequently associated with insomnia, and the coexisting problems can be difficult to treat. One problem can exacerbate the other. It's time to find a sleep professional when pain causes sleep problems and you are unable to fall asleep again. There are a variety of treatments available to ease the sleep problems of chronic pain sufferers, including medication and physical therapy. Disruptions in a good sleep cycle can be caused by nocturia. Nocturia is the frequent need to get up and go to the bathroom to urinate at nighttime. Some researchers believe that getting up once during the night is within normal limits, Two or more events per night may be associated with some extra daytime tiredness, but people with severe nocturia make it up five or six times during the night to go to the bathroom. Nocturia becomes more common as we age. As we get older, our bodies produce less of an antidiuretic hormone, which means that we produce more urine at night. Another reason for nocturia among the elderly is that the bladder tends to lose holding capacity as we age and older people are more likely to suffer from medical problems that may have an effect on the bladder. In fact, nearly two-thirds of all respondents to a recent poll of adults between the ages of 55 and 84 reported this disturbance at least a few nights per week. If you are experiencing nocturia, talk to your doctor as soon as possible and follow their recommended therapy. If you believe you're suffering from nocturia, these tips might help. Drink your normal amount of liquid, but do so earlier in the day. Cut down on any drinks in the last two hours before you go to bed, especially alcohol, coffee, or tea, as these stimulate urine production. Keep a diary of how much you drink, what you drink, and when. This may be helpful in identifying situations which may make the nocturia worse. 
While there is limited scientific research and no proof of their effectiveness, some people believe that homeopathic medicines, hypnosis, or acupuncture can be beneficial. Be sure to seek advice from a trained practitioner. Although it may come as no surprise that people find it harder to fall asleep when they're emotionally wound up, the relationship between mood disorders and quality sleep is a complex two-way street. Just as negative mood states can make getting a good night's sleep a virtual impossibility, frequently interrupted or insufficient sleep can lead to bouts of depression or anxiety. Regardless of which comes first, the end result is that a blue mood and poor sleep go hand in hand. Could your mental state be contributing to your sleeping troubles? Here are three easy ways to tell. Number one, your switch is always on. Do your worries play on an endless feedback loop in your brain when you climb into bed? Whether you're tossing and turning with anxious thoughts racing through your mind or dwelling on a general feeling of negativity, the inability to shut off the pessimistic chatter in your head during night hours is a major contributor to sleep issues. In fact, the risk of insomnia is much higher among people with major depressive disorders. Number two, you drag during the day. Feelings of depression and anxiety can make it harder for you to stay asleep or to sleep deeply. They can also cause you to have more fragmented sleep patterns that leave you feeling fatigued during the next day, even though you logged in enough hours in bed. Of course, depression itself can be accompanied by low energy, so it's hard to tell whether daytime drowsiness is a result of mood-related poor sleep or low mood itself. Either way, if you are shuffling through your day when you've spent enough hours in bed the night before, your mood may be playing a role. And number three, you have bad dreams. Everyone experiences the occasional scary dream, but frequent nightmares are associated with depression and anxiety, as well as poor sleep quality. It's a tough cycle to break. Disturbing or negatively charged dreams can cause you to awaken from sleep and make it more challenging to fall back to sleep. Then, that inability to get a solid night of shut-eye can leave you feeling emotionally out of sorts the next day, which impacts your ability to sleep the following night. The good news is that depression, anxiety, and low mood are treatable conditions. Addressing these issues can help you improve the quality of your sleep, in addition to boosting your energy level during the day. Talk to your doctor about your sleep troubles and your mood concerns to come up with a plan. Research shows that a solid night's sleep can go a long way to staving off the medical effects of getting older. Sleep benefits the mind in many ways. Not only does it give your brain a chance to lock in memories so that you're able to recall things like birthdays for years to come, it also enhances the ability to memorize new skills. Plus, the sleep you get now may have a long-term influence on your risk for cognitive decline as you age. Surprisingly, too much sleep has been shown to have a negative effect on memory. People who sleep for more than nine hours a night have an increased risk of both dementia and Alzheimer's compared to those who log six to nine. Aim to get the recommended amount of sleep for your age, which would be seven to eight hours for people 65 years and older. Sleep interruptions, whether caused by a snoring partner or a noisy environment, can hurt your brain health. In fact, people who have restless, poor sleep have a higher risk of cognitive decline than those who sleep straight through the night. While disrupted sleep can contribute to poor memory and cognitive decline, nighttime awakenings themselves may be an indication that you're already affected by dementia, since mild to moderate Alzheimer's is often linked to insomnia or increased napping. Talk to your doctor if you've noticed that your sleeping habits have changed. Together, you can discuss whether cognitive decline is playing a role in your lost sleep and what to do about it. Sleep apnea is the primary cause of sleep disruption for approximately 90 million American adults. Snoring is a very common symptom of sleep apnea, which is associated with high blood pressure and other health problems. With sleep apnea, breathing stops, sometimes for as long as 10 to 60 seconds, and the amount of oxygen in the blood drops, often to very low. This alerts the brain, causing a brief awakening and breathing resumes. These stoppages of breathing can occur repeatedly, causing multiple sleep disruptions throughout the night, and the result is excessive daytime sleepiness and impaired daytime function. Untreated sleep apnea puts a person at risk for cardiovascular disease, headaches, memory loss, and depression. It's a serious disorder that is easily treated. 
If you experience snoring on a regular basis and it can be heard from another room, or you have been told you stop breathing or make louder and gasping noises during your sleep, these are signs that you might have sleep apnea and it should be discussed with your doctor. Restless leg syndrome is a neurological movement disorder characterized by an irresistible urge to move the limbs. With restless leg syndrome, you might feel unpleasant, tingling, creeping, or pulling feelings, mostly in your legs. It can become worse in the evening, and it makes it difficult to sleep through the night. Its prevalence increases with age. Talk to your physician if you have any symptoms of restless leg syndrome. The next few slides will talk about different treatment options for sleep disorders. After talking with your doctor, he or she may prescribe medications to help you sleep. The particular medication prescribed to treat insomnia should depend on your diagnosis, medical condition, use of alcohol or other drugs, age, and need to function when awakened during the usual sleep period. Here are some common prescription sleep aids. Hypnotics. These can induce and maintain sleep. They work by acting at areas in the brain believed to be involved with sleep promotion. Antidepressants. These can be helpful if the cause of sleep problem is depression. Likewise with anti-anxiety medications, if anxiety is related to insomnia. Sleep medications may lead to tolerance, withdrawal symptoms, and rebound insomnia. They should be used only as recommended by your doctor. As you scan the colorful boxes of sleep aids on the pharmacy shelf, it may seem easy to grab one to see if it makes a difference in the amount of sleep you get each night. But before you take an over-the-counter sleep aid, it's a smart idea to check in with your doctor. A physician can tell you whether the sleep aid is safe and effective. What's more, since every person's health history is different, a consultation with a medical professional can help you find the right aid for you. Some sleep aids may cause side effects, including irritability, thirst, headache, and more. Ask your doctor about possible side effects that you might experience and any advice for reducing that possibility. Always take the recommended amount as directed by your healthcare provider and read the literature in the back of the box that comes with your sleep aid so you'll know what to expect. Over-the-counter sleep medications are not meant to be a long-term solution. Discuss with your doctor a safe plan to start taking them and then schedule a follow-up visit to report your results. If you feel like you can't get to sleep or stay asleep without taking a pill every night, speak to your doctor. Some drugs can cause dependency if taken for too long or at the wrong dose. Are sleep aids addictive? What are the safety concerns? Older prescription sleep aids still in use for treating insomnia are potentially addictive and toxic in overdose and can lose effectiveness with regular use. Others induce as much daytime as nighttime sedation, which affects waking performance and can contribute to things like automobile accidents. Over-the-counter sleep aids often can include sedating antihistamines. These agents have limited effectiveness and often increase the next day sleepiness after nighttime use. But newer prescription agents are safer, more effective, and less addictive. But they still have some safety concerns, including when these agents induce sleep um, and should not be taken during waking activities. In some situations like driving or talking on the phone, these agents can induce cognitive confusion and memory impairment. All sleep aids should be used with caution in individuals with a history of addiction and addictive personalities. And in the elderly population, due to the nature of nighttime falls, these agents should be used cautiously and at lower doses. Melatonin is a key sleep hormone that tells your brain when it's time to relax and head to bed. Often used to treat insomnia, melatonin may be one of the easiest ways to fall asleep faster. No withdrawal effects have been reported in multiple studies when people take melatonin. Take around 1 to 5 milligrams 30 to 60 minutes before bed. Start with a low dose to assess your tolerance and then increase it slowly as needed. Since melatonin may alter brain chemistry, it's advised that you check with a medical professional before use. Some people use sleep hypnosis as a tool to help them fall asleep. Sleep hypnosis is a technique that involves guided thinking in order to lead a person into a state of relaxation. In turn, this relaxed state should make falling asleep easier. 
There are many sleep hypnosis recordings available that you can download on your phone or computer, but it's not clear whether or not they are effective. The next few slides will discuss good bedtime habits to help you catch some Z's. Small tweaks to your bedroom can result in better sleep and a higher level of sleep satisfaction. Keep the room clean and uncluttered and the temperature set between 60 and 68 degrees. If your bedroom is too bright or loud, consider installing blackout curtains and a white noise machine to limit distractions. Dim the lights an hour before bedtime to help transition your body and mind into sleep mode. Choosing the right mattress can be instrumental in having a good night's sleep. There are three common types of mattresses, inner spring, foam, and adjustable. If you like a bed with bounce, the inner spring mattresses have that familiar bouncy feel. Interconnected coils are extra durable, but individual pocketed coils reduce the ripple effect that happens when someone on the other side of the bed moves. If you prefer a firmer base, memory foam or latex mattresses have much less spring. To determine quality, look at the density and the thickness of the foam, which will determine how deep you'll sink. If your partner tosses and turns all night, consider an inner spring mattress with pocketed coils or memory foam latex or dual chamber air filled mattress. Medium firm picks will all have good motion isolation. But remember, these models could actually be less comfortable on the body of a restless sleeper as there's little forgiveness against one's movements. If you sleep hot, avoid foam or latex, which can hold in body heat. If you have allergies, foam and latex are good choices because they are naturally resistant to dust mites and mold. If you have back pain, memory, foam, and latex can be good choices since it molds to your body for support. And if you can't decide what matters most, you can select a hybrid style mattress that combines the buoyancy of an inner spring core with the motion isolation of memory foam. If you sleep on your side, you'll want a surface that will support your body weight and conform to your shape. Inner springs may have more pressure relief than some foam or latex mattresses, but a soft foam mattress or one with built-in pressure relief points around the shoulders and hips can work well for side sleepers too. If you sleep on your stomach, a firmer bed will provide the best support. Consider a firm foam, dense inner spring, or air-filled mattress. If you sleep on your back, you'll want something in the middle, a surface that supports but has some give to, so it helps keep your spine in healthy alignment. Choosing a pillow that corresponds to the way you sleep can dramatically improve the quality of your sleep, especially if you have special considerations like back pain, GERD, or sleep apnea. Before you start browsing, determine your sleep position type. If you're a side sleeper, look for a pillow that will support your head, neck, and ear, as well as your shoulder comfortably. You might also consider placing a pillow between your knees or thighs to help maintain spinal alignment as you sleep. People who sleep on their back may benefit from thinner pillows, which help to limit stress on their neck. Stomach sleepers are likely to need the thinnest pillows of all to keep their spine as straight as possible and minimize stress on the lower back. If you suffer from neck or upper back pain, look for a pillow that will help the spine maintain its natural, neutral position. Some of these pillows may have an indentation in the middle of the pillow that cradles the head, while thicker edges fill the hollow between the base of the skull and the top of the back, taking pressure off of the neck. Pillow fill is especially important consideration for those who suffer from allergies. Look for ones that are hypoallergenic. Try to maintain a good sleep schedule to improve your sleeping patterns. Try to wake and sleep at consistent times. Your body's circadian rhythm functions on a set loop, aligning itself with sunrise and sunset. Being consistent with your sleep and waking times can aid long-term sleep quality. Some studies have highlighted that irregular sleep patterns can alter your circadian rhythm and your levels of melatonin. If you struggle with sleep, try to get in the habit of waking up and going to bed at similar times. After several weeks, you might notice that you don't even need to use an alarm to wake up in the morning. Nap wisely. Napping during the day may provide a boost in alertness and performance. However, if you have trouble falling asleep at night, 
limit naps or take them earlier in the afternoon. Adults should nap for no more than 20 minutes. While short power naps are beneficial, long or irregular napping during the day can negatively affect your sleep. Sleeping in the daytime can confuse your internal clock, meaning that you may struggle to sleep at night. A study noted that while napping for 30 minutes or less can enhance daytime brain function, longer naps can negatively affect health and sleep quality. However, some studies demonstrate that those who are used to taking regular daytime naps do not experience poor sleep quality or disrupted sleep at night. If you take regular daytime naps and sleep well, you shouldn't have to worry. The effects of napping depend on the individual. Increase your bright light exposure during the day. Natural sunlight or bright light during the day helps keep your circadian rhythm healthy. This improves daytime energy, as well as nighttime sleep quality and duration. In people with insomnia, daytime bright light exposure improved sleep quality and duration. A study in older adults found that two hours of bright light exposure during the day increased the amount of sleep by two hours and incre increased the sleep efficiency by 80%. Try getting daily sunlight exposure, or if that's not practical, invest in an artificial bright light device or bulbs. Exercise regularly, but not before bed. Exercise is one of the best science-backed ways to improve your sleep and health. It can enhance all aspects of sleep and has been used to reduce symptoms of insomnia. In one study in older adults determined that exercise nearly halved the amount of time it took to fall asleep and provided 41 more minutes of sleep at night in people with severe insomnia. Exercise offered more benefits than most drugs in that study and it reduced time to fall asleep by 55%. Although daily exercise is key for a good night's sleep, Performing it too late in the day may cause sleep problems. This is due to the stimulatory effect of exercise, which increases alertness and hormones like epinephrine and adrenaline. However, some studies show no detrimental effects, so it clearly depends on the individual. Reduce blue light exposure in the evening. Exposure to light during the day is beneficial, but nighttime light exposure has the opposite effect. Again, this is due to its impact on your circadian rhythm, tricking your brain into thinking it is still daytime. This reduces hormones like melatonin, which help you relax and get deep sleep. Blue light, which electronic devices like smartphones and computers emit in large amounts, is the worst in this regard. There are several popular methods you can use to reduce nighttime blue light exposure. These include wearing glasses that block blue light, downloading apps to block blue light on your laptop or computer or smartphone, stop watching TV and turning off any bright lights two hours before heading to bed. Limit late night eating. Late night eating may negatively impact both sleep quality and the natural release of melatonin. That said, the quality and type of your late night snack may play a role as well. In one study, a high carb meal eaten four hours before bed helped people fall asleep faster. Limit nighttime fluid intake. Drinking large amounts of liquids before bed can lead to excessive urination during the night and can affect your sleep. Although hydration is vital for your health, it's wise to reduce your fluid intake in the late evening. Try not to drink any fluids one to two hours before going to bed. You should also use the bathroom right before going to bed as this may decrease your chances of waking up in the night. Limit your caffeine. Caffeine has numerous benefits and is consumed by 90% of the US population. However, when consumed late in the day, coffee stimulates your nervous system and may stop your body from naturally relaxing at night. In one study, consuming caffeine up to six hours before bed significantly worsened sleep quality. Caffeine can stay elevated in your blood for six to eight hours. Therefore, drinking large amounts of coffee after 3 to 4 p.m. is not recommended, especially if you are sensitive to caffeine or have trouble sleeping. If you do crave a cup of coffee in the late afternoon or evening, stick with decaffeinated coffee, but do realize that even decaffeinated coffee still has a small amount of caffeine in it. Limit your alcohol. Downing a couple of drinks at night can negatively affect your sleep and hormones. Alcohol is known to cause or increase the symptoms of sleep apnea, snoring, and disrupted sleep patterns. 
It also alters nighttime melatonin production, which plays a key role in your body's circadian rhythm. Another study found that alcohol consumption at night decreased your natural nighttime elevations in human growth hormone, which plays a role in your circadian rhythm and has many other key functions. Relax and clear your mind in the evenings. Many people need a pre-sleep routine to help them relax. Relaxation techniques before bed have been shown to improve sleep quality and are another common technique to treat insomnia. Strategies include listening to relaxing music, reading a book, taking a hot bath, meditating, deep breathing, and visualization. A relaxing bath or shower is another popular way to sleep better. Studies indicate that they can improve overall sleep quality and help people, especially older adults, fall asleep faster. Alternately, if you don't want to take a full bath at night, simply bathing your feet in, in warm water can help you relax and improve sleep. Try out different methods and find what works best for you. Relaxation exercises. If you have trouble falling asleep, relaxation techniques can help you quiet your mind and calm your body. Try one of these simple exercises in the picture when you're in bed. Sit on a chair, scrunch up your face, then relax it. Tense your arms, then relax them. Tense up your shoulders and chest, then relax them. Tense up your legs, then relax. Breathe in relaxation, breathe out tension. Do some breathing exercises before bed. Close your eyes and notice your breathing. Turn all your attention to your natural breathing pattern and feel the air enter and leave your nose or mouth. Visualize the flow of air as it passes through your mouth airways and down into your belly and back out again. Survey your body for any tension and as you exhale feel the tension leave that part of your body. Visualize your breath reaching your forehead, your neck, your shoulders, your arms and then releasing the tension as you exhale. If your mind starts to wander to another worry or thought, let it go and gently redirect your attention back to your breath. What next? Here are some other resources to help. There are many resources available to learn more about sleep issues and how to improve your quality of sleep. For this presentation, I used information from the National Heart, Blood, and Lung Institute, the National Sleep Foundation, Men's Health, and Healthline. If you want any uh, more details about a particular topic relating to sleep, you're welcome to reach out to me and I'm happy to help you find the information that you're looking for. Locally, here in Wheaton, we also have two physician groups that have sleep doctors and sleep centers. Northwestern Medical Group is one, and DuPage Medical Group is another, and their phone numbers are on the screen. You're welcome to talk to your physician about the need for a referral, or you can call directly to these places uh, for more information and to schedule an appointment. Thank you for attending this presentation. I hope that you found it valuable. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. My name is Beth Gregg. My phone number is 630-681-4037. I look forward to hearing any comments and suggestions, and I'm happy to help you find any information that you need. Have a nice day.